So today, we have the final four gates of Tiferet. Now, this first gate especially is one of the most consequential uh, from the perspective of initiation. So, I advise exploring it deeply and really getting to know it. Okay, now this uh, opens up the possibility of two more triangles and one, our very first quadrangle. Okay. So, the first gate is the path of Chef that leads from Bina to Tiferet. From Bina to Tiferet. Um, so, we start in Bina. And from, this is from the universal perspective at first. We start in Bina, which is infinite form. Infinite variety of forms coming and going. They all have no duration at all. Only form itself is eternal and infinite. So here there are an infinite number of forms. Now, Bina is not potential. A lot of people think of it as the potential for forms. It's not potential. It's the inevitability. Every form that we see in Bina, every one of those infinite number of forms that exists ever so briefly is inevitable in the realm of Tiferet, okay? So we come from that realm of inevitability with the only uh, step we can take from here forward is for all of those forms to manifest. And that is the path of Cheth. It's, it's the manifestation of all of those inevitabilities forming the realm of sequence. Everything below Bina is the realm of sequence, the temporal realm, the realm of manifestation. It's all heading towards that finite, infinitely finite present moment of Malkuth, okay? So this is the descent of Heth. Now, <clears throat> Heth is <clears throat> also the Akasha. It is <clears throat> that, fa that, that phase of self-realization where things become sequentialized, where things <clears throat> pass transit from undifferentiated state to a differentiated state. And that passage we call the Akasha. And with this gate, you can, you eventually come to not master the Akasha. That's really a misnomer. There is no mastery of the Akasha. But we can master the techniques that we work with the Akasha. So all those techniques in initiation about mastering the Akasha, we can master those techniques and become masters at working with the Akasha, inserting our will at that moment where the undifferentiated becomes differentiated and affect that process. Okay? So, in this gate, the first working of this gate, we're flowing with that descent into manifestation in Tiferet, the, the realm of the infinite number of solitary cells that form everything around us in the sequential <laughs> realm, okay? So we're flowing with that development, and it is a very natural flow 
downward into manifestation. And then the upward flow, when we return to Bina, along the path of Heth, we're going against that flow. We're uh, going from differentiation to non-differentiation. It is, in essence, a simplification to the non-differentiated state of infinite form. Okay? So it's sort of a reversal, but in that process, we learn so much about the Akasha. We learn through this reverse movement all about the downward movement. We understand more clearly that descent into manifestation through the Akasha. So this, the universal aspect of working this gate is all about the Akasha and that transition from an undifferentiated state into a differentiated state. And the, the, the uh, revelation of this new level of awareness from the I to the solitary self, that little reflection of the eye amidst the infinite uh, ocean of other reflections of the eye. Okay? So that's what that gate is from the universal perspective. And that knowledge is really essential in initiation. Okay? Now, the personal, um, individual uh, experience of this gate, traveling of this gate, is we start in Bina with our greater self, okay? This is the realm of our greater self. Looking down into the, the temporal realm that it gives birth to. It's, the temporal realm is its creation, so to speak. Okay? It gives birth to the temporal realm and to those solitary selves that form the temporal realm. So, we start in Bina as your greater self and you descend along the path of Cheth into your, your solitary self. And you see, this is all about that connection with the greater self. And what, what I mean by greater self, what that relationship is, these two separate perspectives, except that the greater self, as it enters, as it gives birth to all of these individual, I mean, these solitary selves that it engenders, and each greater self gives birth to a large number of solitary selves, but as it gives birth to the solitary self, it fills that solitary self. You, your awareness is an aspect of the greater self. Okay? You are your greater self, a part of your greater self. Your greater self is composed of a set of essential meanings coming from Hakma, a set of essential meanings in a specific ratio, and it projects, it expresses itself as it must in differentiated realm <clears throat> as solitary selves, okay? And you are 
one of those expressions of your greater self. So in the downward, you're learning about that, the, the creation of the, the solitary self. And then when you reverse that, you learn about your relationship with your greater self as opposed to your greater self's relationship to you, this is about your relationship with your greater self. And it's in this working of this gate that you establish that connection with your greater self and make it into a conscious experience, okay, that stays with you all the time you become aware of the greater self and its influence, okay? So, that is a very important gate in terms of initiation because so much of the process of initiation is building up to that point. The first five steps of initiation in Dramatic all focused on that point when you establish that connection with the greater self. From then on in, you don't really need a book to guide you. You have your own internal guidance, as it were. Okay? So, that's the... <clears throat> that sets the stage now for a triangular gate, the first quadrangular gate, and then a closing triangular gate. So the first triangular gate <clears throat> starts again with this path of Heth. Start in Bina, we come down to Tiferet from the universal perspective. Bina is giving birth to the temporal realm. And then we pass up to Hokma. So Bina, in the, as the temporal realm, is reverting all of its essential meaning to that infinite mass of undifferentiated essential meaning. Again, it's that passage from differentiated to undifferentiated, from one realm of uh, awareness to another realm of awareness, okay? Up to Hakma. And then we go from Hakma over to Bina, along the path of Shin, the mother letter of fire. And we make that passage of where essential meaning must express itself as infinite form, a central form. Okay? So the return then is from Bina, we move against that rushing flow of Shin, Back to Hogma, pure, essential meaning, infinite, essential meaning. Then we come from Hogma down to Tiferet, and all of our essential meaning is getting, becoming expressed, is expressing itself through that infinite number of solitary selves that is forming the temporal realm. All that undifferentiated essential meaning becomes differentiated essential meaning in Tiferet. And then we rise again up to Bina and we pass through the Akasha to that state of undifferentiated form. So this gate is all about the Akasha and uh, the consequences of the Akasha that shift between undifferentiated and differentiated. That step in awareness, that difference in awareness from the awareness of just I to self and other. I, small I, and other, okay? The personal experience of this gate 
we start in Bina as our greater self and we descend along the path of Heth and enliven, give life to our individual self, our solitary self in Tiferet. Then we pass up the path of Zain to Chokma, letting go of that individual uh, identification and merge with the infinite ocean of essential meaning. And then we transit with that rush of energy across the path of Shin into Bina, expressing ourselves as our greater self, okay? Then we go backwards. We go against that flow of Shin back to that infinite ocean of essential meaning. And then we descend via the path of Zane as just that essential meaning that we express as a solitary self. We bring that essential meaning down into our individual self. And then we rise up again to Bina and our greater self, reuniting with our greater self, merging our part of the greater self with the whole of the greater self. Okay. Now, <clears throat> the meaning of this gate has to do very much with our relationship with the greater self and that, that akasha, you know, that, 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 that phase between differ undifferentiated and differentiated in the personal relationship to that transition, okay? Okay, the universal experience of this first quadrangle is we start in Bina, that infinite ocean of ever-changing form, the expression of all that essential meaning, we start there and we descend. We must express ourselves and the whole body of greater selves manifest as individual selves and form the temporal realm in Tiferet. Then we let go of all form and rise up to that infinite ocean of undifferentiated essential meaning. We mean something. We mean everything. Everything that was in Tiferet is here in this realm of essential meaning. Then we rise again along the path of Aries to Kether, the I, the infinite simplicity of the I. And then we express ourselves in Bina, in the perfection of form. Perfection of form. Then the reverse. We rise again to the I, the infinite I. And then we descend into Hokma and become infinite meaning, infinite essential meaning. And then all of that essential meaning is expressed in Tiferet as an infinite number of solitary selves and forms the temporal realm. And then we pass up that birth canal through the Akasha and return to Bina, the mother of all, the 
infinite ocean of form. Okay. Now, <clears throat> from the personal perspective, we again start in Bina with our greater self, and we make that transition through Heth. Heth is cancer, uh, ruled by the moon. Okay? We make that transition to Tiferet, standing as our solitary self at the upper edges of the realm of sequence. And then we journey upward through Zayin to Hokmah. We let go of any sense of individual self and merge again with the infinite, undifferentiated, essential meaning. And then we pass through the path of Aries back up to the eye. We let go of essential meaning and just reside in I-ness. And then we pass down into infinite, essential form through the path of Taurus, of Va. The perfection of all and every single one of those forms. And we reverse. We let go of form, of any form, and reside again in just the simple, infinitely simple I. And then we realize that we exist and our infinitely complex essential meanings. And then we descend and form our own particular solitary self, our individual self that is composed of just these essential meanings in this specific ratio that is our solitary self. And then we return to our greater self, to our mother, the one who gave birth to us. Okay. So, <clears throat> this particular gate is all about the relationship between the supernal realm and the sequential realm of the solitary self, the individual self. The self, the us, you know, our awareness, which of course is connected to the supernal realm. It's all one thing, just these clearly defined different phases of the one thing, okay? Now, <clears throat> the final gate in this series is really a lovely gate. From the universal perspective, we start in Bina, that infinite form. We pass through the Akasha to the realm of the solitary selves where the undifferentiated has become differentiated. It is, it has taken solid form, essentially. Relatively, comparatively, solid form. It's at least on its way to solid form. It must, from this point forward, lead to Malkuth. And then we rise up together. We let 
go of all differentiation and rise up into the I. Simply I. The one thing. Completely undifferentiated. And then we pass down into Bina, that perfection of form, where that the entirety of that one thing, the I, expresses itself in form. And then we release all form and return to the infinite I. And then we descend into that infinite ocean in the entirety of our being is expressed in all of these little parts, these infinitely finite parts reflect every single iota of the eye. And then it retreats into the undifferentiated state of being. Undoes everything done by the Akasha. And we are again in Bina. Now, from the personal perspective, we start in Bina as the greater self, as our greater self. And we pass down the path of Heth. We pass through that birth canal and emerge as a solitary self in Tiferet, surrounded by an infinite number of other solitary selves, each of us reflecting the eye. And we pass up towards that eye and merge with the eye in Kethar. And then we pass down into Bina and our own greater self, which is the perfect form for this quantity of essential meaning. It is absolutely perfect in its form. And then we pass back upwards to the eye. And then we pass down into our solitary self. And that particular bit of the eye shines so brilliantly amongst all those other reflections of the eye. And then we pass back to Bina and our own greater self. Now, this gate uh, at the universal level is all about that connection between the I and everything in, this, in the temporal realm. Between every, every solitary self, the root of everything in the temporal realm. It's connection to the I directly and through the greater self, okay? And at a personal level, it's also all about our connection to our greater self and the I. That connection is one, you know? When we connect with our greater self, 
we're connecting with the I at the same time. We connect with the I through our greater self. This is a very important connection to cultivate, okay? So, <clears throat> that's it. That completes Tiferet. <clears throat> and the next gates, we will begin working with Kedula. Okay. Till then, bye-bye.